So hello ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first coding with Python. So let me show you how this is going to work and then we will get started with the first lesson. Let's get started. Okay, so if you go to Kerbal.com and then Kerbal Learning Portal, I have a new tab called Python and there you will find all the bytes as we go along. If you click in here, it will tell you what we're going to learn. In the first byte, we're going to learn how to print, how to um, input, uh, to ask for user input and then about variables. And um, here you will find what we're going to learn. Here you will find the notebook that I will be using so you can actually, I'm going to show you. So if you click here, it's going to take you to my GitHub where I store these labs, but you can click here on opening collab and then you can follow along you need to create a Google Collab um, account, but once you create it, you can actually follow along on this notebook as I do, okay? Make sure you save a copy because you won't save. Um, and that's all. Then at the end, once we've done everything, you're going to create a program. You're going to put what you learn into practice and you will see it here, Trinket. This is the program that we're going to create. The first one is going to be ask the player for their name, which is going to be my name is Ruth, you click enter and it says, hello Ruth, nice to meet you. So that's what we're going to learn today. And this is going to be the structure moving forward, okay? Then I will give you days or something to for you to create the program and then a video will come here that will, you know, show how it was done, okay? So you get stuck. Let me know how many days you think there should be between I give you the byte and you actually solve it, okay? I'm thinking maybe a week, but it could be less or it could be more. You tell me. So let's get started. Here we have um, Google Collab. So Google Collab is basically Google lending you a computer that has Python installed in it. Okay, so there are a few things that you cannot do because, you know, they have to protect their computer kind of thing. But yeah, here you're going to find the link to Kerbal Data Lab, to, no, to these to Kerbal Learn Portal and then a link to the video. Obviously, I'm playing the video now, so this is another video, but you will find this video in here. And then we start coding. So in any programming language, when you code something, you always start, or the first time you code something in a new language, you print hello world. So print basically returns, is like the smallest program you can do that returns something back. So we're going to print hello world. Hello world is text and there are different ways to put the text into your Python. You can put text with double quotes, you can put text with a single quote, you can you know, have text with triple quotes. It depends on how the text actually looks like. So you know, you, Python doesn't get confused. So I'm going to show you two methods. To print something on Python, you write a print, everything in the lowercase, and then double quotes hello world, and then you shift enter to execute the code, shift enter. Um, this says you must be logged into account, so make sure that you log in. I'm going to log in, go back in a second. So I'm logged in now, shift enter, and that will execute the code. It's telling you that it's been loaded from GitHub, so make sure there's no uh, malicious code. I wouldn't know how to create malicious code, so you're safe, so run. And the first time you run it, it'll take a little bit of time. I guess Google is checking that there's nothing weird going on behind the scenes. But then once it runs once, it'll go very quickly afterwards, right? So as you can see, we get printed. We have created our first small program in Python. Yeah, so hello world. Now, as I told you, there are other ways you can print. So to create a new line, you press enter, okay? Exactly the opposite as a lot of other programs, <laughs> very confusing. So print, and then we are going to print hello world with single quote, hello world, hello world. And then shift enter, maybe you should put that one too, shift enter, and then it'll print again, hello world with single quote. So you can imagine that, for example, if you write don't, that has a single quote, it would be a problem for Python to understand, so then you wrap it with double quotes. That's why you have different ways to write uh, strings in Python, okay? Um, 
where else? We are going to print multi-line text. As you know, we're creating a game, a crime game. So that means that we will have to tell the story to our player so they can follow along and do stuff. So multi-line is something that we will use quite often. And there are different ways. You'll find that Python has a lot of ways to do the same thing. So there are different ways to do this. One, you could do like print, and then you can say, my name is Ruth. And then you go there, enter, and then you can actually do another print statement. And then you can do, and I live in Sweden. <laughs> Sweden. And then you can do another print statement, print. And then you can write, but I was born in Spain. In Spain. Okay, so if you print it like this, shift enter, what you're going to see is that it prints in different lines, which is exactly what we wanted. But there is another way that I actually prefer at the beginning, but not anymore. It's quite annoying. Let me show you. So if you want to create a new code block, you will go in here and then plus, plus code. The, uh, you can also move them up and down. You, you can hover over and do plus code too. So there are different ways to create new code blocks. You can be there and then plus B, and then it will come a new code block. So I'm going to show you other ways to do it. You can do print. That's what the way I prefer at the beginning, not anymore. <laughs> and then you can do, I think the combination of both is good depending on what you're trying to do, we would say so. So you will write like this. My name is Ruth. And then you can backslash M and then continue writing and I live in Sweden. So the bas backslash M, what it does is, it gives us the new line, right? And you can write everything in one line, so that's why it's neat sometimes, but you can also go outside the double quote and then click enter, and then start again with double quote, and then put the escape again, backslash M, and then continue, but I was, born in Spain. So if you want to do it in different lines for readability, you can actually do that. It works perfectly. Shift enter, and then it will produce the code. You don't need a space in there. And you can see my name is Ruth and I live in Sweden, but I was born in Spain. So it works beautiful. Okay. Now we're creating a game. That means that we need to ask the user for their input all the time so they can make decisions and ask questions and, you know, that type of stuff. So to ask a user for something, you would do input and then you ask the question, what is your name? And then shift enter and then it's asking you, right? So you say, okay, my name is Ruth and then it will print the name. Now, we are going to need to ask the user things, and then we will need to reuse their answer multiple times. For example, when we ask the name, we probably want to use the name across the entire game. So Ruth, what would you think of that? Or what would you, right? So what we want to do is to store the name in a variable, and then we can reuse that variable anywhere we want in the code. So we are going to now create a variable called username, and this is as simple as this. And then we're going to ask for the name. So input, what is your name? Right? So whatever answer they give us, it gets stored into a variable called username. So shift enter. What is your name? You answer it, Ruth. And as you can see, it's not giving us the answer because the answer is now stored in a variable. So how do we know that we did that? we're going to print it. So if you go here and just write username, you don't need to do anything else, and shift enter, it'll give you the name, okay? So you might be wondering or not, like, why did it know what username to print when we didn't ask for the username again? And here's the thing, Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notes, or in this case, Google Collab is the same thing, it stores the variables that you create in memory while you're running the notebook. If you will close the notebook and start again, we're going to do that. We can, you can actually simulate that by going here to runtime and restart runtime. So it, it's like 
restart the computer, forget everything I've done, and then if I go in here and I run it, it's going to tell me, hey, username is not defined because the variable that was stored, you know, the value for the variable, it doesn't exist anymore because we haven't run this part here. So if I would run this one now, what is your name, Ruth? Now it's storing it, and then if I go in here, I can run it and say, hello, Ruth, nice to meet you. Really important. And it's actually very useful to know how to clean the memory of the Jupyter node because it happened with, for me in the beginning that, you know, I was creating variables and then I delete them, but they still had the memory and I was reusing them. And then when I went back to the file the next day, you know, the, the program didn't run. So before you close a Jupyter node, it's actually quite useful to clean the memory, rerun it, and see if you don't get any errors, okay? So now, what are we going to code today? Let me show you. So your job is to create this small program, as I showed you in the beginning. What is your name? Ruth. And then, hello, Ruth, nice to meet you. You need to do that in one code block, okay? So the code block is this part, okay? So go and create it. You have all you need to be able to do it. And let me know down below when you want to have the answers. Would you like to have a week? Would you like to have just a few days? I can give you, for example, the answer for the weekend so you can practice in the weekend. I don't mind. Just let me know what your preference is. And I will see you very soon with the next bite. Hopefully, I think I will have time to do a math plot the introduction video. Let's, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I'm not sure I can, but I'll try. So see you very soon. I hope you enjoyed this first bite. Leave me feedback. Again, you will not hurt my feelings. Let me know what you think. I'll see you very soon.